Welcome to Career Insights. The Career Insights series features local industry professionals engaged in conversation with students and recent graduates about career planning and job opportunities in Polk County, Florida. We have several presenters today. In addition to myself, we have Frank Dunn, who is the program director for the EMS program. Uh, Jim Davis, who is the program director for the fire science program and Sergeant George Falgren, who's a coordinator at the Kenneth C. Thompson Institute of Public Safety. Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Frank Dunn, uh, interim program director for Polk State College EMS program. I just want to talk to you a little bit about our EMS program, what we have to offer. Now, with the EMS program, we have our certificate programs, which is the three tiers to the EMS system. And then it goes into the uh, uh, AS degree in EMS. So our first uh, class that we have is emergency medical responder. It goes into emergency medical technician and you have to have EMR completed before you can go into emergency medical technician. After that course is completed, and we'll go into each of these courses here in just a second. The next course you have is paramedic. Now, once that's done, you basically have done all of your core courses for your AS degree. So once those three tier levels are done, you go to your general education courses, which is your, your social science, English, math, and those classes, you'll, you'll graduate with a uh, EMS degree. So once, once you get the, the main portion of it is the three levels of EMS that you have to do anyways, if you wish to become a, a paramedic and work in the EMS field. So with our EMR course, it's one semester long. There's no prerequisites. There is a co-requisite of a CPR class with it. And if you do have uh, a American Heart Association BLS level provider card already, we, we can work around that. That's um, not a problem. The course meets once a week. Uh, we have a day class and a night class. And there's also a lab component that goes along with it that you work at your own pace to get all of your uh, skills done as far as like taking blood pressures, learning how to put on people on backboards, learning splints and um, stuff like that. Once you do complete the EMR course, there is job opportunities already for you. Uh, many of the uh, local private ambulance services will hire you as an emergency medical responder. You'll be working with an uh, emergency medical technician, but you will be uh, doing transfers and whatever calls that, that they run in whatever county. Each county has, has different levels of care and has different uh, uh, call by or call levels that they run. But you can get employed as an emergency medical responder uh, once you get that certificate and then you're done with it. The next course is emergency medical technician. This class is made up of two different classes. This has a lecture portion, which you'll meet two days a week, typically on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And we have, once again, we have day and night classes. And then there's also another lab component with it. Now with that lab component, you also, you're not only are you doing the skills just like you did in EMR, but you're also doing, uh, you start doing ride-alongs with ambulances and the fire department. You have to do a total of uh, um, 100 hours. You'll do time with uh, Polk County Fire Rescue, uh, Winter Haven Fire Department, Lakeland Fire Department, and you'll also do clinicals at Lakeland Regional uh, Medical Center. So those are all those are the two things that you'll do with EMT. That is also one semester long. The next class is paramedic, which there is an application process that typically starts April 1st to April 30th because our classes typically start in August. Um, to be in the, to get into the paramedic program, you have to have your uh, state of Florida EMT. You have to obviously have completed the two EMT classes. Then you have to have your either basic AMP or AMP one and two. Um, there's a lot of, of why that's different. Um, it has to do with what's in the classes and stuff like that. And there's depending upon what you want to do after you become a paramedic. Like if you were thinking about going into nursing and use the paramedic program to bridge into nursing. So then the course is over a year. It's three semesters. We typically, like I said, we typically start in August. So we start in August. Semester two will start in January. And semester three will start in uh, May, typically ending around the first, second week of August, depending upon um, holidays and stuff like that that we had throughout the year of, of missing classes and things like that. The class runs on, um, we call it a shift schedule. For those of you that are familiar with uh, fire departments, uh, 24 and 48 where they work for 24 hours on and they're off for 48 hours. So our class is kind of set up that way. So it's, so it goes every third day except on weekends. So like one class you may go on Mondays and Thursdays, 
the next week you'll go Tuesday and Friday, and then the following week you'll go Wednesday, and then the week after that you'll start back on Tuesday and Thursday again. So it's not a traditional uh, class schedule like our other two programs are. Um, each component has a lab and a classroom component. So there is a lot more involved, obviously, with the paramedic program of doing clinicals uh, out in the field. You're gonna be obviously working with the fire departments again, just like you did with EMTs and doing more time with the uh, hospital at Lakeland Regional. You also will do a rotation and labor and delivery. You also do a rotation in the uh, trauma uh, uh, critical care unit up at Lakeland Regional. Uh, you do a total of uh, 500 hours on the ambulance and 144 hours uh, in, in the uh, hospital. So you're getting almost 600 hours or almost 700 hours of clinical time with hands-on experience out in the field when you do the program. So it prepares you uh, pretty well for when you're done with the, uh, the program. And this is a uh, kind of like a, an example of courses that you can take and how you can take them through uh, the semesters to get all your, your uh, class for your degree. So it has like your first semester, you can take emergency medical responder, you can take your basic a &P, and you can take your uh, general psychology and, and, and uh, college composition. Because EMR of all the courses, they don't take up a lot of class time. Um, there is obviously study time and, and lab time, but there is enough time to do those other classes with it. And if you take your basic a &P with your EMR, it will actually help you in EM, uh, EMT and in the EMR class because there is an A&P in all three levels of the EMS program. So then your second semester would take your EMT courses like we talked about earlier. Uh, then the third term, you would take your um, topics of mathematics and introduction to humanities, and then you would finish off with your paramedic. And once you finished your paramedic, you would have your uh, credits for your AS degree for, for emergency medical services. Want some more information or get in touch with me or anyone here at the program, our email is ems at polk.edu. Thank you, Frank. Um, next, we have Jim Davis from the fire science program at Polk State. Thank you very much. Uh, glad to be here. At the fire service, uh, some of you are trying to decide what your future is going to be. Um, probably in high school, you still are uncertain which direction you want to go. I can tell you right now, 42 years in the fire service, it was an adventure for me. It was a calling. Um, it's not for everybody, but I can tell you as a coordinator at, in the fire science program at Polk State College, I still, I'm still involved with it. I still work with the students and I still teach it at Ridge Technical College. I'd like to share a couple of things with you. Polk State College does not teach the minimum standards to be a firefighter. We teach the advanced courses and we articulate those courses into our program from various schools. We've just authorized the fire departments to teach those courses in-house. So once you get hired on somewhere, they often provide those courses there that articulates in our program for our two-year degree. And the two-year degree in the fire science program is um, required to get promotions in almost any professional department. You're not going to, you're not going to get promoted to lieutenant, captain, or chief without going through the educational process. Most city managers require that uh, authority having jurisdiction. Um, recently, Doug Riley that went to Polk State um, was named the fire chief of the year in the state of Florida. So that's in Lakeland. So he went through the program at Polk State. Just give you an example of, of some calls we had to let you know how exciting the job can be. In one two week period of time, we went to a car crash into a house. A dog was trapped in a sewer. We had a high rise fire. We had a ring stuck on somebody's finger. We had a child's head stuck in a fence. We had a vehicle upside down in the lake with people still alive. We had a cat in a tree. We still go to cats in a tree. We had a lady stuck in an elevator for three days. On Lake Martha, we had some men that was cleaning out the lake that was bit by a moccasin. Um, the fangs were still in the foot. Um, so high speed crash on Havendale and the car landed on the roof of, of Hendricks um, 
chiropractor place. That was years ago. And the final one was a foot stuck in a toilet. So the job is different. It's not sitting behind the desk. It's a team concept. And um, of course, I started right after the Civil War. You know, I started back in the 70s. So a lot has changed since then. Um, today, we've got some advanced tools you work with. The safety features are there. In the United States, there's 1.5 million firefighters. And they, when I started, there was 200 firefighters to die annually. And there was half the number of firefighters in. Today, there's twice the number. And the number of deaths is down to 87, I think, last year. So the safety, risk management, leadership um, is, has made safety a lot better in the fire service. My lieutenant was a lady. She was one of the best lieutenants I ever had. So gender is not a factor. Um, we prefer to hire a servant leader, somebody that wants to help others, not just to get the benefits. Now, let me talk about the benefits. You, like Frank said, you work one and you're off two. So basically you're working 10 days a month. You, the average salary is $43,000 in the state of Florida. If you go to Boca Raton, you start off at $63,000 and you work one day and you're off three. So you only work six days a month. That gives you plenty of time to fish. That gives you plenty of time to go shopping or to go hunting or whatever, whatever your hobbies are. I'm telling you, I enjoyed my career, not just because of the time off, but the team concept was what I enjoyed. I, you worked, you ate, you, you played, you went on vacations with somebody. It becomes an extended family. So if you go to Europe and bump into a fireman, you have a common bond. When I worked for the city of Orlando, we had a bed upstairs that had a orange paint around the base of the bed. If you walked, walked in that fire station and showed them your badge, they said, we've got a bed for you. You're going to eat with us. And we used to go to the airport at Orlando and drive and park at the fire department and they would carry us to the plane and we'd load from outside. Of course, that was for 9-11, but it is a, it is a family. Um, and the reason I mention that, um, it's got a decent salary. If you work in the fire department for 10 years, the average pay is near 55 to 60,000. Here's something else. Winter Haven Fire Department right now is hiring. Starting salary is 37,000. If you have paramedic that Frank talked about, that is $8,200 added to that, which brings it to 45,000 starting off. If you have special rescue training, add two more thousand to it. So that brings you up to $47,000 for working 10 days a month. So, um, Winter Haven also has a Kelly day. So that means that once a month, you can take a day off. So you work nine days a month. If you're in physically good shape and pass a test they offer, you get two more days off a year. You get five vacation, you get five vacation days off a year. So, so the benefits is a lot better. Now I will say this, the volume of calls have increased. The first day off, you almost need that to rest because you're running anywhere from 15 to 25 calls a shift. What do you need to be a firefighter? Now, let me tell you right now, if you do social media, you better watch what you post. You better watch what you comment on. Those things will haunt you. Also, your driver's license. You better not get too many tickets because even if the fire chief wants to hire you, human resource will say you're a liability. They will not hire you. So um, drinking and driving or doing drugs, you're not going to get in. If you got a felony, 
If you got a police record, you're not going to get in. So they will screen you based on those things and it will haunt you where you can never get in. Now, you will have to have your GD or high school diploma to get hired, to get go through the basic training. Um, you can't smoke for one year prior to going through that basic training. The basic training is 500 hours. It is four days a week. Like I said, we don't teach that at, at Polk State. That's taught in 40 different schools throughout the state. We have an award-winning school for minimum standards at Ridge on Lucerne Park Road in Winter Haven. And you go 12 weeks, uh, four days a week, seven to five. And you have a state test and a written state test you have to pass. No fire department will hire you. Pretty much no department will hire you unless you got your EMT and your basic minimum standards I just mentioned that Ridge offers. So once you take that, we're talking about like 700 hours total of training. Um, you're gonna end up making more than, unfortunately, you're gonna make more than school teachers. Um, now, let me talk about the retirement. You work with us in Winter Haven or other departments you basically work 25 years and you walk out with almost your entire salary for the rest of your life. School teachers have to work 30 years and at age 62, I think it is, they get half of their salary, I think is the way it is. So the fire service has something to offer from pensions. We got working 10 days a month, salary has come up. So it's certainly something to consider. I would love to have you to come through our program at Polk State College. You can go ahead and get started, take the general eds. You can go either through the paramedic EMS side or the fire science and get your two year degree. Either one, the fire departments will honor in a promotional process. Let me say this, there's 12 of those technical courses you gotta have for Polk State to articulate that into us that those 12 courses can be taken virtually anywhere. We don't offer them at Polk State. I'm a part of helping articulate that into our system. You have basically your general ed and you articulate 12 courses. Those courses are 45 hour courses and those courses are like um, company officer leadership, tactics, arson investigation, building construction, and it goes through an advanced series of courses to prepare you for officership leadership. And um, those courses are very valuable. You will not get promoted in a fire department unless you go through those courses. So um, if there's anything I've left out um, uh, and you think of, you'd like to ask me, um, if ever you need help on this, you can contact me through the web page um, uh, on the fire science technology at Polk State College, or you can call Ridge Technical College, uh, Lucerne Park Road. They'll be able to help you a little bit further, but, but what a great career. Like I said, it's not for everybody. It, remember this though, minimum standards, when you go through it, it's a confidence builder. If somebody else can do it, you can do it also. There's four fears you've got to overcome. The fear of heights, the fear of heat, the fear of claustrophobic, and also the fear of running three to four miles. So they, they have a physical ed portion also that you've got to get through. It's quasi-military, so if you don't like to follow instructions, it may not be something for you.